Hello, it's Mike Levin from Mike Levin SEO, and I'm out walking the dog. That's the construction going on in my building. It's about 9 a.m. Wednesday morning, August 20th, and I'm thinking through next steps. Yesterday was immaculately productive as far as getting a new project going in GitHub that kinds of pulls everything together and is my new rallying point now that the code execution environment that is Raspberry Pi and Python and all that stuff is is a done deal. So this is really the next phase where I, I create a new project uh, which I've called Gropey, G-R-O-P-E-Y. I couldn't get one of those great PY extensions because of the nature of the word, but it, I think it works out well. It looks good. And I produced something like 12 videos already in sort of a step-by-step -step procedure, and I'm trying to do something uh, significantly new, which is a uh, utterly documented project in GitHub where almost every git commit has a YouTube video to go with it to explain what happened there. And it's particularly important and useful in an application like this because it's a fairly open-ended application and I hesitate to create something which is a framework, uh, the words of Joel Spolsky warning against uh, astronaut architects always comes back to me but the point of my system is that it's so darn useful so fast that it's less like a framework and more like just a time saver on list management, which is pretty funny because uh, one of uh, Joel Spolsky's big applications that didn't really take off like some of his others is a list of list managers. And that, in the end, is one of the ultimate data types of all things, lists of lists. That concept shows up over and over. It's called different things, uh, hash tables, hash tables of hash tables. And uh, it showed up in Ray Kurzweil's book on creating a mind, making the premise that, you know, this cascading arrangement of recognizers is what uh, creates human consciousness. And a lot of people talk about the Lisp programming language as being the um, tool that can help that come about, especially when the hardware processors to handle big apps are optimized for those types of apps. And uh, I'm going off on a tangent. Let's get back to the point that what I'm making is just another list of list manager uh, that works particularly well with JSON-like data objects, which are really Python data objects, but it will be familiar to people as JSON, uh, handled by Python to do the processing because uh, it is so suitable for uh, list of list type manipulation. And I'm contemplating my next steps, which I believe are to be to actually get it to be useful, to actually start using it in place of my existing tool that you've seen pop up a few times through an iframe hitting a bookmarklet. So I got a few pieces to hook together and there's really a big divide between uh, pre-user interface and post-user interface. Pre-user interface, everything occurs through uh, type in command line terminal shell window, whatever you want to call it. And files have to be set up ahead of time, and worse still, they're in a, a special shelf file format, which means you can't just load them and edit them in a text editor for the data objects they are. So you have to go from somewhere where the data is visible in a human readable way to that format so that the tool can. Uh, bring it in as a shelf, but it's still a wise decision because those shelves are going to get us a lot in the near future. Uh, but so I need something to turn, uh, you know, uh, text, human readable text, uh, JSON-like files into the uh, 
shelved files on the hard drive so that the tool can access it. And uh, let's see, that's even going to be before a user interface. I'm probably going to build a, a particular tool to uh, make that happen. And then uh, when the user interface comes into the picture, it will be wedged in in such a way that um, these servers that work off of files on the hard drive for data are going to become completely uh, web heads. No data needs to touch the hard drive once you're using Google Spreadsheets for the UI. That's my goal anyway, and it's certainly the most memory efficient way to do it, because say you're processing uh, a thousand rows. Why should those thousand rows uh, exist as data on the uh, SD card of a uh, Raspberry Pi? Uh, we're still, say, it's back-ended by Redis, and you've got a hundred thousand rows you're gonna process. You would never want those hundred thousand rows to touch the hard drive of your Raspberry Pi, except maybe a row at a time at most. And even then, that's a lot of unnecessary I.O. and all that could just live in memory. So, one of the big things today is to figure out how to wedge in either Google Spreadsheets or those uh, large databases, but more so Google Spreadsheets. The large databases will take care of themselves with the shove uh, API to replace Shelve. And so long as I don't program myself into a corner by using Shelve wrong, Shove should seamlessly take the place there. So where I really need to focus on is the reading and writing of rows when it's connected to Google Spreadsheets. Because there I can very easily see falling into the trap of making all the code work the same exact way every time, regardless of Google Spreadsheets or not, which would mean it uses the hard drive every time. So even if it's only a uh, thousand row spreadsheet in Google, why should you ever put a thousand rows of data? Why should you read it all at once? And then why should you drop all that data onto your local drive. This app processes a row at a time, although while it's processing the rows, it does have access to all the other rows in the system. So I need to address that. So basically, instead of connecting Google Spreadsheets at this one magical location that shuttles the data over and leaves the uh, existing flow, logic flow, to work exactly as is, which is a great temptation, I am going to need to break up the app into all these different points at which a Google Spreadsheets way of interacting with the data can alternatively uh, take the place of doing it locally. So... It's going to be a little bit more uh, involved than I probably would have liked. And it's the reason the original version of this particular rendition of the system um, was so t tightly coupled to Google Spreadsheets because it has its own API. And once you work that way first, it's a lot of work to decouple it. It's decoupling work. And it's really easier to just make the whole application from scratch again and have it completely mine uh, than it is to rework the old system. It'll be more elegant, it'll be using lots of stuff I learned over the past five years, and uh, um, you'll be able to uh, customize it to suit your needs. Some people are going to only be able to use this system via Google Spreadsheets, and some people are only going to want to use it uh, without a user interface so that they can run massive scheduled jobs. Um, and no way should be better than any other way. It's just for a different audience. And it all lends itself to the uh, killer app nature of this thing I'm trying to build. Uh, as long as you need to look things up based on something you know prior, 
or you know where to look for that information prior, this is a job executor, a job queue um, automation tool to pull back that information on however frequent of a basis you need and to generally put it in a format that humans like to consume and can use and can take it to the next step with without having to do further shaking and baking. People have a love-hate relationship with spreadsheets. They like those summarized tables. They like graphs, pretty charts, uh, executive summaries. And then they hand them around and pat each other on the back and do nothing with it. They say, get the data into a spreadsheet so that we can do some analysis on it. But then you're looking at a, a dense grid of information in front of you and you're like, oh, this is not for humans. And uh, so there's always this going back and forth between spreadsheets good, spreadsheets bad. Well, in the end, you can always graph and chart and make your data pretty and do dashboards. But having the data in the first place in a form that humans can do those next step items is the most valuable piece. And so hence the spreadsheet-centric view of the world of my system. And uh, I guess I've rambled on long enough today. Um, time allowing, I am going to get the system to be useful without the user interface and do the thought work and planning about precisely where and how the G data, the Google um, API, is going to step in and handle things that would otherwise end up on the local hard drive. Well, thanks for joining me. Uh, share this video and don't forget to subscribe. Say bye-bye, Cecil. Bye-bye.